Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our ongoing series, Is It Worth It? In today's video, we'll discuss whether or not the iconic line of loafers from G.H. Bass & Company, known as Weegians, are worth your money. <laughs> flagship product line from G.H. Bass & Company, the Weegian has been a staple of prep and ivy dress codes since its original introduction back in 1936. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about the prep style or ivy style dress codes, you can take a look at our videos on those subjects here. But before we zero in on Bass Weegians, let's first take a moment to cover what actually qualifies a shoe as a loafer. You can find the most detailed information in our loafer guide video here, but in the meantime, here are the broad strokes of what a loafer is. Firstly, and perhaps most obviously, a loafer has no laces. Phrased another way, it is a type of slip-on shoe. Also, a loafer is a type of so-called low shoe, meaning that the ankle is exposed and the shoe doesn't wrap snugly around it. Loafers will often feature a heel with a relatively low profile compared to some other dress shoe styles. And while the upper vamp of a loafer will often feature a moccasin-like construction, the sole of a loafer is separate from its upper. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with any of these terms, you can check out our guide to the anatomy of a dress shoe here. Loafers will sometimes, though not always, feature an additional strip of leather across the vamp referred to as a saddle. Those are the general notes on what makes a loafer a loafer. For more information on how they were inspired by but are different from moccasins, the full loafer guide has you covered. Now, one more thing to cover before we get into the specific appraisal of the models of shoe we selected for today's video, and that would be a brief historical overview of G.H. Bass & Company. George Henry Bass entered the shoe business in 1876 as a junior partner in the E.P. Packard Company out of Wilton, Maine. Within three years, he had assumed full control of the company and given it his name. Bass & Company made moccasins as early as 1906, which they dubbed the Bass Moccasin Cruiser. Other moccasin styles were also created, which included the Rangely, the Ski Moccasin, and the curiously named Wacamock. Upon George Henry's passing in 1925, his sons John and Willard would take over the company. Bass was also well known for its aviation and ski boots, often used on Arctic expeditions, but they would have their biggest success in 1936 with the premiere of the Weegian Loafer. The moccasin-inspired design of the shoe, which included most of the features we outlined above, did include a strip of leather across the vamp with a diamond-shaped cutout. Bass christened their shoes Weegians to sound like Norwegians, a nod to the roots of the loafer-style shoe, and also to differentiate their shoes from other slightly similar styles that had already hit the market. From then on, Weegians became immensely popular, particularly in America and especially with prep school students in the 1950s. While students would originally keep dimes in the cutouts of their saddles in order to make payphone calls, the copper color of pennies was more fashionable with the brown leather shoes offered at the time, and therefore they became known as penny loafers. Bass & Company was purchased by Cheeseboro Ponds Incorporated of Greenwich, Connecticut in 1978 and would be sold to Phillips Van Heusen, later the PVH Corporation, in 1987. And since 2013, the brand has been owned by the G3 Apparel Group. Today, Bass has expanded the original range of Weegian styles to include a much broader range of options. There are Weegians in the classic leather style, of course, but also in patterned fabric, suede, faux lizard skin, and more. They offer Weegians with dyed or natural colored leather soles, as well as crepe soles and rubber soles, which have been dubbed Easy Weegians. 
Additionally, the famous saddle strip has also been supplemented by tassels, horse bits, kilted straps, and more. And Bass has extended its original product range to include Weijins for women and children, as well as men. For today's video, we selected two different styles of Weijin. First is the Logan, which is billed as the original style, with a dyed edge leather sole and a flat strap across the vamp. For the Logan, we selected the medium brown leather that was most commonly seen in many vintage advertisements for Weijins. The other style is the Larsen in blue, which features a natural colored leather sole and contrast stitching, as well as decorations on the side of the saddle strap, referred to in the loafer world as beef rolls. Both of these pairs retail on the Bass website for a price of $110. This is the standard price for most pairs of Weijins, although Bass does offer other styles for as little as $95 and as much as $195. Both of the styles we selected today feature smooth leather soles with rubber top lifts on the heels, as well as a handcrafted welt. As for the build quality of the shoes, they both seem fairly solid, if somewhat unremarkable. There are a few oddly spaced stitches on the welt of the Logans, and the beef rolls on the Larsons do seem a bit asymmetrical. The subtle color variation in the medium brown of the Logans is pleasing, though they do have a slightly shiny finish that may suggest that the leather was either treated or coated somehow. Meanwhile, the blue Larsons have a more understated matte finish to them. In addition to the uneven stitching on the sole of the Logans, there was also a slight tear in the leather on one of the seams of the upper. There are a small handful of quality American shoemakers who still produce their products in the United States. Allen Edmonds, for example, makes most of their shoes in the U.S. However, as with a great many number of historic American brands, Bass at this point has moved construction of their shoes to other locations, and in this case, both of the pairs we ordered were put together in El Salvador. As for fit and comfort, both pairs fit true to size. I ordered an 8.5 in both, and they're fairly comfortable out of the box. More comfortable and better fitting, in fact, than the dark oxblood penny loafers I recently ordered from Allen Edmonds. Because by nature a loafer covers less of the foot, however, fit will vary not only from brand to brand and style to style, but indeed from pair to pair. In this case, both of the styles we ordered did fit me well. On the Bass website, most models are offered in full and half sizes, and some are also offered in wider widths, though not all. Moving on from build quality and initial impressions then, let's answer the question of how we think you might best wear these loafer styles. Obviously, the contrast stitching and natural colored sole of the Larsons make them a more casual loafer style, really more in line with something like a boat shoe. By the way, if you'd like to take a look at our guide to boat shoes, you can find it here. And while it's obviously more traditional, the Logan would probably look best with a smart casual ensemble. Its overall effect is a bit too mid-level in terms of style and formality to really be paired with something like a full suit. All of this then brings us to our main question for today. Do we think that a pair of Weijins from G.H. Bass & Company are worth it? While the brand has maintained its classic styles and also expanded into new territory, we think that the models of today are ultimately serviceable shoes. That is to say, they're certainly better than something like a cemented sole model you would get from a typical department store, but there are also higher quality options out there. Something from Allen Edmonds in America, for instance, or a brand like Loke in England. On that note, stay tuned because we've got a great video covering the best men's dress shoes in the $100 to $300 price range coming soon. Generally then, we think that the $110 price point is just about right for a modern pair of Weijins. If cared for properly, they could certainly last you for a handful of years and could be resold by a skilled cobbler, assuming you have leather-soled models.
Meanwhile, the $95 Easy Weijins give off the impression of being somewhat cheaper, with features like a small tag on the side of the shoe and slightly chunkier rubber soles. And assuming the same general build quality, we'd say that the shoes at the higher end of the line are probably priced a bit higher than they're worth. It should be acknowledged, of course, that we've formed these impressions of the shoe after only having them for a short while, and of course, to really get the full experience, you'd want to wear them for a longer period of time, at least a few months. Overall, then, we'd say that a pair of Weijins from G.H. Bass & Company is worth it if you're looking to spend just enough money to get a smart casual shoe with solid but unremarkable build. This historic brand fortunately hasn't become a shadow of its former self, but of course there are higher quality loafers out there if you're looking to spend even $100 or perhaps even just $50 more. And one more thing here, be sure to check out our full playlist of Is It Worth It videos here for reviews of other iconic brands and items. Today's video features a summery, casual outfit with a color palette that's based around the two pairs of Weijins we selected. My polo shirt is medium blue, and there's a slight color variance in the weave. It also features a light blue inner placket, dark brown buttons with white accents, and light blue contrast stitching. By the way, if you'd like more information on polo shirts and what makes a good one, you can check out our guide on that subject here. My trousers are plain brown, as is my belt, which features a silver buckle. And my socks feature alternating light and dark blue in a herringbone pattern. I won't go over my shoes here, of course, because we've already discussed them in depth. And while today's outfit is exceptionally casual and therefore doesn't feature any accessories, if you're interested in different types of menswear accessories, such as boutonnieres, collar pins, pocket squares, and so on, you can check out the Fort Belvedere shop here.